Today on Spiritual Awakening Radio, Lost Psalms of the New Testament, introducing the Book of the Odes. Let's explore the would-be Book of New Testament Psalms, referred to as the Book of the Odes. When I was fairly young and beginning my spiritual search, I was greatly influenced by several books. The Cloud of Unknowing, authored by an anonymous mystic. The Confessions of Jacob Bohem, or Jacob Boma, the German mystic. I was greatly influenced by some hymns of St. John of the Cross. The Nag Hammadi Library. Also, Metaphysical Meditations by Paramahansa Yogananda. And there was this book I acquired called The Lost Books of the Bible and The Forgotten Books of Eden, both titles in one. Perhaps back, you know, a hundred years ago, it was uh, two separate volumes, and then they got combined, The Lost Books of the Bible combined with The Forgotten Books of Eden, perhaps. And there's some good stuff in there, books of Adam and Eve and books of Enoch, but the real jewel of that collection is something called the Odes of Solomon. Now, these odes are not really having anything whatsoever to do with Solomon. They are not an Old Testament, pseudopographical, apocryphal, extra-canonical text. Not at all. They are New Testament psalms. Psalms of early Christianity, the first hymn book of early Christianity. They have nothing to do with Solomon. How do the Odes read, and where were they composed? The Odes read as if they were composed by the same community that authored the Gospel of John, not all that far from Antioch, Syria. It's as if the same John community said, let's publish a collection of hymns. And they came out with the Book of the Odes. You know, that might actually be the truth of the matter. Both the Gospel of John and the Odes are from the same basic geographical location, and the Odes read a lot like what you would expect the John community to publish for a collection of hymns. You'll see what I mean. I'm going to share one of those hymns to the Logos, the Word. How did the Book of the Odes, commonly known by most people as the Odes of Solomon, how did it get its name? How did it get renamed? How did it get misnamed, misfiled, and misplaced? doomed to obscurity by being given the wrong name, so people think of it as some Old Testament apocryphal writing, when in fact it belongs right with the New Testament writings. How did it get renamed Odes of Solomon? Someone apparently, somewhere along the way, a few centuries A.D., combined the Book of the Odes, a collection of 42 Odes, with an apocryphal text known as the Psalms of Solomon, probably to create an even larger collection of hymns. Over time, as the centuries passed in people's minds, the whole thing became associated with Solomon, even though the Odes are an early collection of Christian hymns that date back to the 1st or the 2nd century A.D., depending on who you talk to. Misnamed, misfiled, misunderstood. But nowadays, the Odes are being recognized for what they are and read by many people around the world. There are some translations of it you can access for free online. There's a new one that came out that's copyright-free, which came out not that Long ago, I'll tell you about that translation. There are some very scholarly translations that have been published in recent years as well. And you get to hear about it today on Spiritual Awakening Radio. The Odes of Solomon, the would-be book of New Testament Psalms. I was very happy not long ago to learn of a book published by Hal 
Tasig called the New New Testament, which features not only the 27 canonical books of the New Testament, but also some extra canonical ones as well, such as the Gospel of Thomas, various sayings of Jesus, some apocryphal stuff from the Nag Hammadi Library. But also in there is the Book of the Odes. I was very happy that they recognized it and placed it in the right place, a collection of New Testament hymns, a book called The New New Testament. The Odes of Solomon, the would-be book of New Testament Psalms. Out of all of the apocryphal writings I've collected over the years, I think of the Odes as being the most beautiful If you were to say to someone who is skeptical about apocryphal writings that are very suspicious, that think these are all written by some secret cabal of heretics trying to trick people and are really scared and, you know, very fearful and apprehensive of extra canonical scriptures, if someone like that said, okay, convince me, share with me one apocryphal book that's just going to be amazing. The best, what, what's the best one you can share? What I would do is share with them the Book of the Odes. It is just, I think, the number one extra canonical, most impressive of the apocryphal writings. It is the would be Book of New Testament Psalms. The Book of the Odes has been described as the first known hymn book of early Christianity. One scholar said of the Odes, Here are some of the most beautiful songs of peace and joy that the world possesses. Bentley Layton in the Gnostic Scriptures says the Odes were considered to be inspired scripture and were chanted, were sung by Christians who lived in Syria and around the Mesopotamian region about 2,000 years ago. A follower of the Unity School of Christianity published an edition of the Odes a few years back and created daily affirmations based on this ancient book. These ecstatic hymns remind me of Rumi or Sufi poetry in the tradition of the lover and the beloved. They also remind me of the Sikh scriptures of India. Many have adopted the practice of meditating upon the Odes, Lexio Divina, and report being brought to a deeper level of devotion or bhakti, being caught up in a love affair with God, the ocean of love. That's also been my experience. Long ago, once upon a time, the Odes were my first encounter with mystic poetry. And, of course, these days, there are hundreds of volumes, you know, in Sant Mat. Uh, big, fat, giant, eight-volume set. Sri Guru Granth Sahib, Adi Granth, Dasam Granth, Dadu Panch Vani. Big, fat books of Kabir poetry. Tukaram, Sultan, Bahu. You know, countless are the lovers of the beloved. Many, many volumes of Sants and Sufi mystic poetry. Sufi poetry, Sant poetry. But once upon a time, yeah, the odes along with metaphysical meditations, served as my introduction to that kind of literature. And I certainly am glad to have encountered the Book of the Odes, known to most people as the Odes of Solomon. Not an Old Testament book, but an apocryphal or deuterocanical scripture that I refer on this program as simply the Book of the Odes, to avoid any confusion and misidentifying with other books of Solomon out there. has nothing to do with Solomon, so therefore I shall refer to it as a collection of early Christian psalms known as the Book of the Odes that date back to sometime during the 1st or 2nd centuries AD, written originally in Syriac, Aramaic, and translated into Greek long, long ago. Thank you. 
Book of the Odes, there is no hard way where there is a simple heart. Good thought finds no wounds. Nor is there any storm in the depths of illuminated thought. Surrounded on every side by the beauty of the open country, one is free of doubt. Below is like above. That's from Ode 34. This is a verse from Ode 9. Open your ears and I shall speak to you. Give me yourself so that I too may give you myself. Ode 12, the truth, the word, or sound of the Logos, and the aeons, the cosmic worlds. The word of truth filled me, and in order that I might speak it, and like the flowering of water, truth flowed from my mouth, and my lips declared its fruits. And it increased in me its gnosis, because the true word is the mouth of the Lord and the gates of his light. And the Most High gave the word to his aeons, the interpreters of his beauty, the narrators of his glory, the confessors of his thought, the revealers of his mind, and the the teachers of his works. For the swiftness of the word is indescribable, and like its narration, so are its swiftness and sharpness, and its course is limitless. For it is the light and the dawning of thought, and the aeons spoke to one another by the word, and they acquired speech, those who were silent. And from it was friendship and harmony, and they spoke one to another by it. And they were goaded by the word, and knew him who had made them, because they were in harmony, because the mouth of the Most High spoke to them. The dwelling place of the word is man, and its truth is love. That is Ode 12 of the Book of the Odes that some people who collect apocryphal writings might refer to as the Odes of Solomon. Not really Solomon, though, as it's from a pseudepigraphically titled apocryphal text. An accurate title would be the first known collection of hymns or psalms of early Christianity, preserved in Syriac Aramaic, Coptic and Greek. This mysterious collection of ancient psalms known as the Odes of Solomon or the Book of the Odes, written in Syriac, a dialect of the Aramaic language, has been described as, quote, some of the most beautiful songs of peace and joy that the world possesses. These mystical poems and prayers remind me of Rumi and other Sufi poets, as I mentioned. Sometimes I refer to the odes as the would-be book of New Testament Psalms or the lost Psalms of the New Testament. And I find the odes to be a very spiritual book, one of the best examples of an apocryphal or extra-canonical writing that got misplaced, misfiled, misnamed somewhere along the way. It's one of those lost books of the Bible. Now that the Book of the Odes has been rediscovered, it is my hope that the contemplation of these outpourings of the heart will be the catalyst for much-needed new spiritual movements desiring to express a heart-centered spirituality 
of art, wisdom, eloquence, poetry, music, and chant, the path of the lover and the beloved. The original music or sound of the odes remains unknown. The actual notes of these various hymns are lost to history. We have only the words preserved. But it is my opinion that the form of chant used by the Syriac Orthodox Christians of Mesopotamia most resembles how the odes would have sounded if we could go back in time and hear them being chanted in places such as Antioch or Edessa, Syria, sometime during the 1st and 2nd centuries A.D. It would sound like Syriac chant, basically, like they sing psalms in Syriac Aramaic, even now in the churches of the East. That's what the odes would sound like. And may again, if someone, you know, from that tradition decides to adopt them and uh, put music to them in Syriac Aramaic, you know, why not resurrect that sound, that ancient sound of the odes? Have at it, Syriac Orthodox, you know, composers of the East. Get a copy of the odes and turn it into a glorious Syriac chant. Won't you please? The Odes were also popular amongst the Gnostic movements existing in Egypt during the early centuries AD, and several of the Odes got quoted, got included in one of the largest collection of Gnostic Gospels to be discovered thus far, called Pistis Sophia. In fact, a few of the Odes only survive in Pistis Sophia. You know, there are some Odes in... Syriac, Aramaic, a few in Greek and Coptic. And so scholars have had to take all of the surviving quotations from various manuscripts and put them all together to recover 41 of the 42 odes. One of the odes, odes number two, ode two is missing to history, although I see there's a, a modern translation that has attempted to rediscover Ode 2, the Lost Ode. I don't know how accurate their discovery is, but it is included online, and I will send you a link. I will share with you a link to the first translation to recover the Lost Ode, Ode 2, out of this collection of 42 odes that it once was. Uh, It's been 41 surviving odes and one missing, Uh, When you add that missing one back, it would be, of course, a collection originally of 42 odes or psalms from the early days of Christianity. And I'll share with you a translation of certain odes by Sebastian Brock. This is from a book called Spirituality in the Syriac Tradition by Professor Sebastian Brock of Oxford University, one of the great Syriac translators of the modern era. From his translation of the Book of the Odes, This is from Ode 8. He hasn't translated all of them himself, but he has translated several of the Odes. Is one of the translators of Odes these days. Open up your hearts to the joy of the Lord. Let your love burst forth from the heart until it reaches the lips, bringing forth fruits for the Lord, a holy life, giving utterance in awareness, illumined by his light. Arise and be raised up, all who have once been brought low, all who have been in silence, speak, for your mouth has been opened. Those who have been despised from now on be lifted up, for the justice of your case has been established. The Lord's right hand is with you. He will be your helper. Peace has been prepared for you, even before your conflict began. Listen to the word of truth. Receive the knowledge of the Most High.
Love me, all you who love, for I will not avert my face from those who are mine. For I recognized them before they came into being, before they even came into being. I had an understanding of them. Their faces I have imprinted at baptism. It is I who establish their limbs. This is from Ode 9. Open your ears and I shall speak to you. Give yourself to me so that I too may give you myself. As you hear there, there, there is a divine voice that sometimes speaks in the odes. And it's also true that there is a saying or two of Christ to be found in the book of the odes. A couple of sayings of Jesus embedded in there. I don't think most scholars think those are actual ancient sayings of Jesus, but are sort of poetic license in musical lyrics, if you will. I don't think those are considered to be ancient sayings attributed to the historic Christ, but more or less just poetic license, you know, in the music of the odes, in the poetry of the odes. There are some translations of the Book of the Odes you can access for free online. If you go to gnosis.org, G-N-O-S-I-S dot O-R-G, and do a search, you'll find two translations of the Odes of Solomon, the Book of the Odes, as I prefer calling them. You'll find two translations of the Odes there. There is a website, the one that supposedly has re-established The Lost Ode, Ode 2, which they give the title Immortal Land. There is this website, nura.net, N-U-H-R-A dot N-E-T. And in this website... Of interesting stuff, by the way. There's a lot of great writings at, at this website. Uh, there is an Odes of Solomon section. The Odes of Solomon, the Nura version, released in 2020. Translation from the Syriac by Samuel Zinner, who's an interesting scholar, by the way. And there are other translations uh, from Coptic and Greek made by another scholar as well. There are some hard copy editions of the Odes, and as I mentioned, the New New Testament by Hal Tossig features a translation of the Odes. If you'd like to receive a link to the Odes online, I have several links I can send to you featuring online editions as well as hard copy books, different translations of the Odes that are published. And there are some editions of the Odes of Solomon at the Library of the Internet, known as the Internet Archive. So just send me an email, ask about links to the Odes of Solomon, and I'll send you a little information packet on the Odes of Solomon and how you can just read them for free online or access hard copy books if you feel so inclined to pursue hard copy editions of different translations of the Odes. My email address is james at spiritualawakeningradio.com. James at spiritualawakeningradio.com. Wrapping up today's program, I'm going to revisit Ode 12, the greatest, I think, of the odes. This is from a different translation of Ode 12. He filled me with words of truth that I may speak the same. Like the flow of waters, truth flows from my mouth and my lips reveal its harvest. And it gives me the gold of knowledge. For the mouth of the Lord is the true word and the door of his light. And the highest one gave the word, or logos, to his worlds, which interpret his own beauty, recite his praise, confess his thought, are heralds of his mind, are instructors of his works. 
For the swiftness of the word is ineffable, and like his statement are its swiftness and sharpness. Its course knows no end, it never fails, it stands. Its descent and its way are incomprehensible, like his work is its end. For it is the light and the dawn of thought, and through the word, the logos, the worlds converse. The mouth of the highest one spoke to them, and he was made clear by his word. The dwelling place of the word is man, and its truth is love. <laughs>